Hey guys, Tyler here for the Pillow Fort again. Uh, going way, way, way back with this deck tech. This is Rafik of the Many. This is the very first EDH deck I've ever really made. Um, I remember experimenting with some and uh, just trying them out with the cards that I had, and but this was the one that I went out, I found the cards, I bought the cards, um, I researched it and all that kind of stuff, and that was again when I kind of first started playing. It hasn't been touched, I don't think, at all since I started making it, and this is like back during the beginning of uh, Ravnica days, if I believe, so you'll see a couple of those guys in there. Uh, Rafik of the Many, he has Exalted, and whenever a creature you control attacks alone, it gains double strike until end of turn. He's a 3-3. His colors are uh, white, blue, and green. So you're going to be seeing a lot of, you know, those kind of cards in here. Um, once again, like I said, I've, uh, at the beginning, I started with a bunch of different colors, and then I found that I really liked playing with black. So this is kind of the last remnants of those. And uh, the reason why I haven't really gone back and done it much with this deck is because of that. It's like... It's not mean enough for me in a way. <laughs> um, uh, Great Pelt Refuge, getting one life, cool. Uh, another Refuge, getting another life. Uh, Cathedral of War, giving us more Exalted. You're going to see way too much Exalted in this deck, um, obviously, because of Rafik. And then Seaside Citadel, just giving me one of all of his colors. Uh, Obelisk of Bant, all the colors again. Mask of Avacyn. Uh, plus one, plus two, and has hexproof. That's mostly for this guy. Um, Acroma's Memorial. Love this card, especially for um, all this stuff that has to do with with Exalted and just buffing a creature. Um, Rebu Rebuke. I like that guy. Uh, Bant Charm. Destroy target artifact. Or put target creature on the bottom of its owner's library. Or counter target instant spell. So, I really like this card. Once again, you know, with my stuff that I haven't really updated, you'll see a lot of putting creatures on the bottom of their owner's library, but also it, I've always liked cards, like charms that give you multiple things that you can do. Uh, Swift Justice, just buffing a creature when it's attacking, Dramatic Rescue. Um, this actually is not necessarily for the opponent, it's mostly for me. So return target creature to its owner's hand, you gain two life, because a lot of times I can be be attacking with a creature and it's all buffed and I got all this stuff on it or whatever and someone tries to kill it as I'm attacking I've always dropped Dramatic Rescue in and pulled them back. Uh, naturalize just to get things away, Sheltering Word um, once again it's that same sort of thing Hexproof really quick. Uh, that's just for defense, gaining one life and preventing all damage. Uh, mending Touch regenerate target creature once again attack, someone kills it, regenerate it uh, then, sort of the, the opposite thing, return all attacking creatures to its owner's hand. I could do that for me, but mostly I would do it for when uh, someone's going to try and take me down to Artful Dodge, attacking with one guy and just make him unblockable. Um, return target green card from the graveyard to your hand, that's mostly for repeat here. Uh, Urban Evolution, draw three cards, you may play an additional land this turn. Really nice to get the games uh, moving along. Uh, Phyto Burst, really cool, plus five, plus five until end of turn, especially when they're getting double strike. Uh, Divine Favor, just enters the battlefield, so you gain some life, buff some more creatures. Uh, really, because even the smallest buff, when it's gaining double strike on top of it, it's going to start adding up really, really quick. Crystallization, uh, enchanted creature can't block, or attack or block when enchanted creature becomes the target of a spell or ability, remove that creature from the game really mean for two mana. Like, holy crap. Very, very mean. Uh, Claustrophobia, another mean one. You know, just tap it. Once again, uh, if you guys have seen, uh, you know, any sort of deck that's focused on attacking all the time, uh, you'll see a lot of cards that's like removing, oh, this creature can't block, that creature can't block. So that's tossing those type of things in there. Holy Mantle, protection from creatures, making it so that it doesn't matter if you can even block. Um, whenever this creature attacks, you may tap target uh, permanent, so or or untap, so that works, you know, both ways. I really do like that card. Uh, shielding plaques. Uh, when it comes into play, draw a card. 
uh, enchanted creature can't be the target of spells or abilities your opponent's control. So it gives it hexproof, uh, once again, for basically Rafik. Once he hits the battlefield, everyone's like, just get him out of here. He's kind of that dude at the party that when he walks in the door, everyone's like, oh man, who invited Jeffrey here? You know, that kind of guy. Uh, Spirit Mantle, just giving uh, plus one, plus one protection from creatures. Uh, Plumes of Peace, uh, the forecast. When you forecast a tap target creature, once again, removing people from the game. Pacifism, same thing. Unflinching Courage, giving that trample and lifelink. Love that. Oculus Form, love this card too. It like blew my mind when it came out and I was like, oh, I need to put it in Rafik. Uh, it can't be blocked and when it attacks, scribe one. Uh, Oblivion Ring, when it enters the battlefield. Oh, sorry, I was going to explain this, but everyone knows what Oblivion Ring does. It gets rid of things. Uh, Angelic Benediction, Exalted, and whenever a creature attacks alone, you can tap target creature. So you're kind of getting a sense that this had a very one-track mind, very much like, I'm going to attack with one creature, and a lot of those things can't do anything about it. So that, like I said, first deck I really made, uh, it, it was, it's very useful, but at the same time, there's not much depth into it. Uh, finest Hour. If you have an Exalted deck that runs these colors, so really, if it's a Rafik deck uh, and you don't have this card, it has to be in there. Whenever a creature you control is attacks alone for the first combat phase of this turn, untap that creature. After this phase, there's an additional combat phase. And now we're getting into the creatures, speaking of creatures. Um, this guy, just for flying and trample. Uh, Avian Squire, more flying, but especially Exalted. Uh, more exalted, sacrifice them, destroy target enchantment or artifact, you know, any help is welcome. Uh, this guy for death touch, just mostly for blocking, and he's a one drop. Um, Drake Wing Krasis, flying trample again. Seacoast Drake, more of a blocking kind of guy. Sighted cast sorcerer uh, with that exalted, and he gains shroud until end of turn, so, I mean, that's cool. Um, it's another thing where I have turned this guy into the attacker a couple times just in case like I'm playing someone else who likes to really, really uh, focus on, on trying to take people out with spells. Um, Guardians of Akressa, I guess. Uh, Defender and Exalted. More Exalted. Deadly Recluse, once again, trying to block people. Uh, Garuk's Companion, just for that trample and he doesn't cost that much. Uh, Rave Skimmer. Aven, Flying, Exalted, um, Wasteland Viper, more Death Touch, just kind of keeping people away, but he has a Blood Rush, which is just for one, and uh, target attacking creature gets plus one, plus two, and gains Death Touch until end of turn. So that's really cool, especially if I have something with Trample, and I'm heading over there, it's like, let's give him another little edge. Uh, more Exalted, Protection from Black, Elusive Krasis, this guy I have really focused a lot on uh, in this deck because he's got that evolve. He is unblockable, um, so I, I like to get him out there at the beginning of the game and start tossing creatures on and tacking on more and more to him, and uh, you know just make him stronger. Uh, Ascended Law Mage, Flying Hexproof. Once again, like I said, just creatures that can really be turned into that one attacking creature. Uh, just remover, removal for Fiend Hunter, uh, Bush Rider, Vigilance. Uh, Azorius Herald, I love this card, he's really cool. Uh, three mana for a 2-1 with Unblockable, and when he comes into play I gain four life. And when he comes into play I need to sacrifice him unless I play paid blue for him. So uh, just like that, getting some more, more life out there, having another Unblockable in this deck, Unblockable Spells Disaster. Uh, these guys, I think I may have just put this in here to that because they look cool. No, that's not true. It's because they give shroud, but he does look really cool. Uh, Rock's War Monk, Life Link. He's a really good attacker because you can get him out in third turn. Uh, Skyward Eye Prophets. Uh, they're just, I don't know, something about their art I love, love, love. And then reveal the top card of your library. If it's a land card, put it into play. Otherwise, put it into your hand. Uh, just for that draw power in case things are getting stagnant on the battlefield. Invisible Stalker, once again, uh, Hexproof, Unblockable. This is probably one of the biggest uh, attackers I have in this deck, to be honest. When I get them out, I pretty much attack with them every time because Hexproof, 
can't really do anything about it. Unblock for, unblockable can't do anything about it. So, um, wall of denial, defender, flying, shroud, zero eight, perfect wall for this deck. Um, Phyto Hydra, if damage would be dealt to him, put that many 1-1 one -one counters on it instead. So when I attack with this guy, especially with him being the single attacking one, it really makes people not want to block him. Um, uh, Sylvian Saradid, uh, just in here to give me some more mana options. Uh, Archon of the Triumph Variant, taking people out of the game. Um, Treva the Renewer. Uh, when it deals combat damage to a player, you may pay two colorless and one white. If you do choose a color, then you gain one life for each permanent of that color. And he's already a 6-6, six, six, and he has flying. If, I, if this guy's my attacker and I'm doing this over and over, I can build up a huge wall of life uh, for this deck. Stoic Angel, uh, flying vigilance. Players can't untap more than one creature during their untap steps really like this. It goes with the theme of color-wise and everything and keeping more angels in there. Uh, Battle Grace, Angel Flying, Exalted, whenever a creature you control uh, attacks alone, it gains lifelink until end of turn. Once again, just driving home the same thing. Like I said, it's kind of a one-trick pony, this, this uh, deck. Progenitor Mimic, uh, I really put this in here just so if someone else is tossing out a really good uh, creature that has a lot of good attacking to it, I just like to toss this out and be like, I'm going to take that and attack with it. Uh, and so what he does is you have, you may have Progenitor Mimic enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield, except it gains at the beginning of your upkeep. If this creature is not a token, put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of that creature. So I'm going to be making a bunch of them. Someone kills, kills it. I can even make, you know, any other card on my field, but someone kills it, then I have another single attacker to go with. And then the Peace Day Resistance of this deck, the Sublime Archangel, which is uh, a four drop for flying, exalted, it's a four three, and other creatures you control have exalted. So, yes, that's exactly that's exactly the, the icing on the cake when I get this card. It, it, it puts a little fire in my heart for this deck. So, there you have it, that's Rafik of the Many. Like I said, it was one of the first uh, decks I've ever made. Uh, it's very one-trick pony-ish, but at the same time it does get what what it's trying to do done really well, and people hate Rafik, so that's always cool. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, be able to check us out and our other deck techs on our channel. Check us out on Instagram and Twitter, and uh, thank you guys for watching.